Independence, USA, the greatest entertainers in America, is requested by you, the fighting men in the United States Armed Forces throughout the world. Command performance presented this week and every week till it's over, over there. This is an encore you've asked for. A few weeks ago, we did an all-time command command performance in which we repeated the highlights you liked best in all the command performances of the past year. Naturally, we couldn't get into one half hour all of the things you commanded us to let you hear again. So here's Encore Command Performance with Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy, Virginia O'Brien, Fred Allen, Gypsy Rose Lee, the Lou Mel Morgan Trio, Jimmy Durante, and Betty Davis. And to open the show, Benny Goodman and Orchestra with Airmail Special. <laughs> time whenever Charlie McCarthy crawls up on Edgar Bergen's lap and starts passing the time of day with him. Along around last November, Charlie almost topped himself in a regular dickens of a time, which you've asked to hear again. So here they are, Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy. Mr. Bergen? Yes? Mr. Bergen? Yes, Charlie? What have you got under your arm? Uh, That's a book, Charlie. A book? Yes. It's a fat one, isn't it? Yes, it is. Is it the book of the month? No, it isn't. No, I've had this book ever since I was eight years old. Is that so? Yes. (laughs) Certainly read slow, don't you? No. (laughs) What's it about, Bergen? Well, it's the story of Oliver Twist. Of course, you know Oliver Twist, don't you? Know him? Yes. I'm the guy that straightened him out. Now, wait a minute. (laughs) No, Charlie, no. This is Oliver Twist, and it's by Charles Dickens. Oh, you said Oliver Twist. Yes, I know. Dickens wrote Oliver Twist. Oh, did Twist write Dickens? No, no, no. (laughs) Twist is by Dickens. 
Oh, Trist is Di Dickens. Yes, Di Dickens, yes. By golly, that's good, isn't it? <laughs> Charlie, would you like to hear the story? Uh, the story? Yes. Uh, uh, would you tell it? Yes. Uh, would you like to hear it? Uh, 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 well, uh, no. No, I see. <laughs> Nevertheless, I shall tell it anyway. I knew we'd get it. Yes. <laughs> you know, Oliver Twist is required reading. Yes, but it's not required listening. Oh, all right. <laughs> now, once upon a time, there was a little boy named Oliver Twist. How he got his name is very interesting. He was a pencil bender. No, he... <laughs> no. I'll tell you how he got his name. Oliver was an orphan, born in a workhouse. Born in a clink. Yes, in a clink. Yes. <laughs> He got off to a good start, didn't he? Yes. <laughs> Anything he did from that point on was an improvement. Yes, yes. Well, he spent several years in the workhouse. Uh-huh. I know. And then he sold newspapers. No. Then he grew up and he became president. He did not. Vice president. No, no. Not even vice president. It was a flop. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> Would you mind letting me tell the story? Go ahead, go ahead. I'm so sorry. Yes. Well, I'm sorry. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> now, Oliver was given that name by the beetle of the town, Mr. Bumble. Oh, Bumble Beetle, the bagel bender. Now... <laughs> Charlie, are you going to let me tell the story? Oh, go ahead. All right. Somebody has to get laughs. I am not interested in laughs. Thinking of retiring? No, I'm not. <laughs> well, Mr. Bumble named the orphan children in alphabetical order. And when Oliver was born, Bumble had reached uh, the T's. Uh, D.T.'s? No, not D.T.'s. <laughs> uh, yes. And uh, the letter T. Oh, the letter T, yes. And the boy ahead of him, of course, was named after S, or he was called Scubble. Scubble. Yes. Yeah. And Oliver, Oliver was named after T, or Twist. Uh-huh. Now, following T, of course... The next boy will be named after you. How did I get mixed up in this? <laughs> oh, no, I mean the letter U. Oh, the letter U? Yes. Yes. He sure was stuck when he came to X. Oh, I don't know. Huh? He could call him Xavier. Oh, yeah. What comes after X? Oh, why? I just thought I'd ask. No. <laughs> why? Why? Yes. Yeah. And nevertheless, his name was Oliver Twist. Yeah, you're set on that. I'm very definite about that. Well, go ahead. Yes. Yeah. And after spending several years at the workhouse, Oliver was released. And he fell into the arms or into the company of this man named Fagin. Fagin? Yes. What did he do? Well, Fagin was a conniving character. Oh, he was? Yes. A despicable person who, for his own personal gains, would force young boys to make a living for him. Was his first name Edgar? No, well, no. <laughs> Burns him up. Or... <laughs> now, Fagin ta uh, taught these boys how to pick pockets and steal handkerchiefs. Well, there couldn't be much money in stealing snozzle dusters, now. <laughs> well, later on, you see, he taught them to sneak up behind their victims, and while they were otherwise absorbed by, he would pick valuables from their pockets. Now, of course, you know that's wrong. That's very wrong. Yes, the best way is to bump into them. Accident? No. <laughs> <laughs> that way. Yeah. So one dark night... Does it have to be dark? It does. And it was raining, too. Oh, that's perfect. Yes. Yeah. One night, Fagin sent his two of his men out to rob Mrs. Maley's house. Yeah. And uh, they took Oliver with them because they needed a little boy too small to crawl through a window. A what? I mean, uh, a little boy small enough... Um... <laughs> You've got Oliver twisted. Yes, yeah, sir. <laughs> They needed a boy small enough to crawl through a window. Well, I'm glad you figured it out. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Suppose you sit on my knee. No, no. <laughs> I'm doing all right. Don't worry about me. No. You just hold your lips still. You'll be all right. Yeah. <laughs> You're not fooling me. All right. I know where it comes from. All right. <laughs> the great ventriloquist. <laughs> you went out with a bustle. All right. Now, where was I? I don't know. You were laying an egg. No, no. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, as I said, they wanted a small boy to crawl through the window. Oh, he's still there. Yes, yes. But the burglars, dis they were discovered, and Oliver was shot halfway through the window. That's very painful. <laughs> <laughs> 
There's nothing more sensitive. There. <laughs> Poor Oliver was badly hurt. And Bill Sykes... How did he get in? All right, all right. This is a cavalcade, yes. <laughs> he was one of the gang. Well, I'm glad to meet him here. Bill Sykes carried him out and left him on the roadside in the rain to die. Oh, yes. But Oliver didn't die. Stubborn kid, yes. yes. <laughs> Next morning, Oliver crawled back to the house of Mrs. Maley. And robbed it again. No. <laughs> no, he went back to explain what had happened, how he'd been framed. Yes. Yeah. And what do you think happened? They shot him in the other window. No, no. <laughs> no, no. You don't be careful, Charlie. I won't even finish this story. No? No. That's an inducement. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, anyway, he explained to Mrs. Maley, of course, and Oliver was forgiven. Fagin's gang was rounded up and jailed. And the boy's identity was established. What boy? What boy? Yeah. What boy? No, I asked you first. All right. <laughs> Why, the boy I've been telling... <laughs> the boy I've been telling you about, of course. What's his name? Oliver. Oliver? Yes. Oliver who? Oliver Twist. Never heard of him. Oh. <laughs> Another bit of a command performance which you've asked an encore of is the highly original version of an old favorite... In a Little Spanish Town, as sung by Virginia O'Brien. And here you are. In a little Spanish town, T'was on a night like this. Stars were peek a down, T'was on a night like this. We made a promise and sealed it with a kiss In a little Spanish town, t'was on a night like this In a little Spanish town, t'was on a night like this Stars were peaked a boo and down, t'was on a night like this Whispered, be true to me, and he sighed, see, see. Many skies have turned to gray because we're far apart. Many moons have passed away, and still he's in my heart. We made a promise and sealed it with a kiss. Some time back, a chap by the name of Fred Allen made one of his frequent appearances on Command Performance. He was pretty lucky in having a certain lady as his guest, and you liked them so much. Here Fred is once again introducing her. And now, fellas, in answer, in answer to one of your assistant commands, I'd like to present that woman of letters... She is famous as an author of best-selling books, famous as a playwright, and equally famous for, uh, pardon me, what else? Oh, yes, the strip, please. Would you put your hat and galoshes back on, miss? Fellows, meet Miss Gypsy Rose Lee. <laughs> Hello, fellas. Hello, fellas. 
Fred, you said I was equally famous as a writer and as a strip teaser. Uh So if it's all the same to you, I'll talk about books. Well, if it's all the same to you, Gypsy, it's not all the same to me. It's (laughs) all the same to you. Well, after all, Fred, I left that burlesque life behind me. I'm an author now. Well, I know you're an author, Gypsy. I've read your latest book, Undercover. Very good, too. Very good. I didn't write undercover. Oh, you didn't? No, the man who wrote it is a very famous investigator. He spent his whole life hunting for hidden facts, groping in the dark, searching everywhere, searching everywhere for the naked truth. Uh, well, did he try Minsky's? Even an osteopath could learn a few things at uh, Minsky's. Oh. Why do you keep talking about burlesque? Well, burlesque fascinates me, Gypsy. It must take you girls years and years and years to master the gentle art of stripping the tea. (laughs) It's really nothing. It's just like peeling a banana. Uh. (laughs) Would you drop over sometime and help me make up a fruit salad? Uh... You seem to know a lot about burlesque. Well, I do. You know, my grandmother was known in her day as Ginger uh, La Ginger, the Valley Forge Ball of Fire years ago. She was the first woman in history to do what is now called the bump. Your grandmother really invented the bump? Mm Mm-hmm. It must have taken years of research. Uh, On the contrary. One day, grandmother backed into a hot stove, and she just let nature take its course. We were talking about books, weren't we? Well, I'm sorry I wandered verbally. It's just the gypsy in me, gypsy. Anyway, what I started out to say was that burlesque has has a a remarkable history, you know. It started way back with Venus D. uh, Milo. D is the middle initial. D period, Milo. Venus D. Milo? Mm -hmm. Did she do the first trip tease? Yes, but she sort of overdid it. At one performance, Venus de Milo kept getting so much applause, she finally had to take off her arms. I think the old girl deserves a hand for that. In fact, she... <laughs> she can use a couple of hands at the moment, I believe. Well, don't think that burlesque is a cinch, Fred. It's no easy job dropping off this and that to slow music. Well, I don't know about this, but we can't talk about that. I'm not sure. <laughs> There is one thing that bothers me, Gypsy. Why do you always use that slow music in burlesque? Well, Fred, it's very simple. If they played Pistol Pack and Mama, the whole show would be over in 30 seconds. Oh, how true, how true. And those mamas have no place to pack their pistols either. (laughs) But perhaps we'd better change the subject after all. You're here because we have received thousands of letters from troops overseas who want to hear you. They once got an eye full, and now they want an ear full. Oh, that's awfully sweet, boys. I'd like to kiss each and every one of you. Well, Gypsy, that would really be a project. Well, there should be some way that I can send a kiss to all the boys. Say, I have it. You you know, if you kiss a soldier here, when he goes overseas, he can see that your gr- greeting gets around. Now, we have servicemen here. How about kissing one of them? Oh, Fred, I don't want to bother these fellows. <laughs> They're on furlough. They don't want to do any work. Oh, I think I can talk one of them into it, Gypsy. Now, the corporal here, corporal in the first row, would you come up here, the handsome gentleman in the first row? Would you come up here? (laughs) This is uh, Miss Gypsy Lee. Corporal, what is your name, Corporal? Corporal Welch. Uh, Hello. Uh, don't ask any questions. Just grab him and kiss him, Gypsy. Oh. <laughs> That's all. That's all, brother. Say, uh... oh, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute, soldier. Where are you going? I'm going back and thank my draft board. What? <laughs> It looks as though your mission is in good hands, Gypsy. It was nice kissing that soldier. And believe me, brother, he had his basic training. <laughs> and you've qualified him for OCS. Thank you a lot, Miss Gypsy Rose.
The Lou Merrill Morgan Trio are rapidly becoming favorites of everyone. They seem to do things not only better than most others, but they also do them differently. For example, their interpretation of Blues in the Night. My mama told me when I was a neat fan. My mama told me, son. A woman will sweet talk you and give you the go by and turn right around and will slap you in the eye. A woman with two faces of the world, some thing will leave it as saying, yow, 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 yow. My mama done told me when I was in need of bed. My mama done told me, son. Stay away from a woman, cause I know what she'll do. Woo, 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 woo. A woman with two faces of the world, some thing will leave you to sing, yow, 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 yow. <laughs> Now the rain is falling. I uh, hear the train are calling. My mama told me. I hear that lonesome whistle blowing across the chest of a My mama told me. breeze will start the trees to cry, and the moon will hide its light, hold them tight, or when you get the blues, you get them, mostly in the night. <laughs> Take my word, have you ever heard the mockingbird sing a song all day long? Ding dong, ping pong, King Kong, Hong Kong, <laughs> Sarong, Rebong, Mahjong. Look at him now. Say, from Natchez to Mobile, from Memphis to St. Joe. Way over the full wind blow. <laughs> Been in some big towns and heard a lot of full men, but that's the saddest full winds I've ever heard. <laughs> a woman's a two face of the worst and thing. We'll leave it as thing. Yow, 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 yow. <laughs> Get away from now. Another command performance, we had that great lady of the screen, Betty Davis. She barely started her show when a debonair gentleman of the arts entered. Permit me to introduce myself, my card. Fellows, needless to say, James Durante, Esquire. Thank you. Thank you. James Durante, Esquire. I never read anything else. <laughs> you know, Miss Davis, I have been looking high and low for a person of your ilk. I could not help but notice the charm, refinement, and breeding pour out of you like sweat off a horse's neck. <laughs> <laughs> You're trying to turn my head, Mr. Durante. Au contraire, ma petite. Note that my Spanish is impeccable. <laughs> I, was, I was about to mention it if you hadn't. But you still haven't explained why you've been looking for a person of my ilk. Because you, dear lady, are a member of the social set in Hollywood. And I wish to mingle with the blue buds, you know, the her ploy. I see. In, in other words, you're a social climber. Precisely why I am here. But despite my Harvard accent, 
my suave warfare, and you a V, not to mention my esprit de corps and Chanel number no. five. <laughs> I am not acceptable to the upper strata because of the company I keep. What sort of company do you keep? I go around with my family. <laughs> That's a shame. You know, people don't realize what a cultured gentleman I really am. Why, never a day goes by that they don't pick up a book, if only to dust it off. <laughs> what type of literature do you enjoy most, Mr. Durante? Oh, the classics, Miss Davis, the classics. Shakespeare, <laughs> the Maupassant, uh, Oscar Wilde. I-, I love Oscar Wilde, too. Weren't you crazy about Lady Windermere's fan? Yeah, but I like her new act better. She's using a bubble now. <laughs> <laughs> That that must be fetching. But to return to your social problem, Mr. Durante, just how do you propose to solve it? I have a sensational idea, Miss Davis. In order to introduce myself to society, I am planning an exclusive lawn party at my palatial motel. (laughs) Writers come from the intelligentsia. (laughs) It will be the biggest lawn party ever held. The biggest lawn party ever held? Yes, it will extend right into the gutter. <laughs> <laughs> and am I invited? Indubitably. You don't say. Not only that, I want you to invite all your friends amongst the intelligentsia. For instance, can you bring Ernest Hemingway? Indubitably. Noel Coward? Indubitably. Alexander Graham Bell? About him, I am not so dubitable. I see. <laughs> Splendid education, this girl. Well... Wellesley, 32, and you? Taranty, 49. <laughs> but to get back to my party, Miss Davis, it will indeed be a gala affair. Do say you'll come. Oh, delighted, Mr. Durante. Shall I dress? Naturally, we don't want the cops. <laughs> no. Oh, no, no. No, I, I meant, will it be formal? Very formal. Wear your slacks. But I shall. <laughs> Pray do. You you know, Miss Davis, you'll love the people at the party. You're just... They're just... You're set. They write everything wrong. <laughs> it should be, they're just your set. You know Barbara Hutton, of course. Oh, yes. Will she be there? No, but there'll be several girls from her store. <laughs> Naturally, from the ten-cent counters only. Oh, oh, naturally. Tea will be served, no doubt. If you care for that sort of thing. Of course, for the more discriminating guests, they'll, they're straight gin. <laughs> oh, this is beginning to sound like a delightful brawl. What about entertainment? There will, of course, be a multiplicity of casual divertisements for the ensemble. What does that mean? <laughs> What does it mean? I don't know what it means. I did well enough to say it. (laughs) But to tell the truth, I'm a little short on talent for the party. I thought I'd come here and sniff around for some. Well, you have... (laughs) You have the equipment for it. And that is Encore Command Performance. We hope you enjoyed it, and we hope we've given you the repeat performances you wanted to hear the most. And now, this is Ken Carpenter saying so long from all of us over here to all of you over there. Forces Radio Service.